If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. I was at home, and I get this call from Ring. We just received a fire alarm. It's all okay? My fire alarm at our cottage was going off, and then it hit me. My parents are at the cottage. The fire had started in the chimney and spread to the roof. Ring Alarm Professional Monitoring dispatched the fire department before we even could dial 911. My name is Kevin, and Ring Alarm helped save our family cottage. Protect your home today with Ring Alarm. Go to ring.com forward slash odyssey. That's ring.com forward slash odyssey. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. While working as an optician, Jenna Phillips started an account on OnlyFans for extra cash. After 18 months of posting vanilla content on the fan subscription platform, the Austin, Texas resident realized her longtime fetish for acting like a dog could be much more lucrative. I've always acted like a puppy. But not in a sexual way at first. I used to pretend I was a puppy when I was growing up. Looking back on it now, it's kind of always just been there. I just didn't know there was a, a scene. I just thought it was my personality. Believe it or not, she has since grown a massive online following, gaining over 215,000 TikTok followers. Since March, she basically earns $10,000 a month acting like a kinky puppy on OnlyFans.com. Our question, what is a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Uh, Miles, real quick, just so you know, it has been uh, confirmed to us that the Dick's location in Queen Anne was originally a Dick's. It was. Yeah, apparently it was built for Dick's. I'll be there. there. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very unique dicks. Yes, very unique dicks. Different from all the other dicks. Can't believe they don't use that in their slogan. Hello, Christian. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. Got the Ola and the liquor and whores back. That was good. Um, I got to follow the OnlyFans story. This is going to be tough. Hmm. Like I said, I've never acted like a sexy Hmm. puppy because you can't be one. I know. Maybe I should try it, though. In any case... Um, I used to be a runner at concerts back in the day. And uh, my very first gig as a runner, for those who don't know a runner, somebody who just goes and gets things, brings them to and from the venue, just all the things, whatever it is, people, stuff, cigarettes, anything. So I went on my very first runner gig to go pick up some stuff from Fred Meyer. They give you a float of cash. So I probably had like 300 bucks in cash. I only bought a few things at Fred Meyer. On my way back to the venue, I realized I had put the envelope with the cash on top of my car and drove off. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. That was a bummer. Uh, but thankfully, um, I was only 16 at the time, so I called my mom. I was, like, freaking out. And she goes, well, where, where were you last? Let's go back and look. And it was in the center turn lane just outside the Fred Meyer. Thankfully, I got it, and I learned a very valuable lesson that day. Damn. Yeah. I used to do that, man, in uh, high school, too. That was one of my first gigs working in radio. Really? Yeah. I, 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 basically, they give you a big Chevy Econo van. And you're transferring people back and forth, whether right, it be managers right. to the hotel rooms. Some guys you're dropping off at a laundromat for the day uh, for two or three hours. Oh, right, right. And you go pick them up because this was before the days of bands that traveled. Right now, they've got washers and dryers backstage. So when you go to, like, see uh, Paint in the Grass, when we're back there, there's like three or four full-size washing machines back there just going at all times. And I will say, some of the people we meet back there... That- that's a good idea. That is. It's a really, really good uh, idea. Yeah, there are some smelly, I'll smelly I'll tell you this, people. it's hard to wash leather. What's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Yeah, do they have specialized leather washing? I know because Zach Wilde didn't even wear underwear. And everything, like, he wore the same pair of leather pants he told us for three months. Yeah, he didn't care. You know he just reads. He's like, I don't care. He does not care. But, like, 90% of these people we meet backstage, they're in leather. Like, mm-hmm. What yeah. are you washing? What's a, what's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Cameron. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. On so my story starts out pretty crappy, but it gets funny towards the end. So earlier this year, um, I lost my job due to the coronavirus and stuff, and so about a month or two into all that and the job search, um, someone got into uh, my account and started spending like five hundred dollars at Walmart. Um, so I had to work with. 
case fraud and all that to try and figure that out. Um, but as soon as we got that card canceled and everything else, I logged into my account to kind of figure out what was going on with it. And I could see that they were still in the account, like working on a shopping basket that moment. So I just went through line by line and deleted it as they were adding things for a good half an hour, just until they kind of got the idea that I just deleted the account entirely. Do, uh, did you change your password? Did you change your card? Did you get it canceled? I mean, how did you handle uh, it? Yeah, I had to get the, the card canceled, so they sent a new one. And then I just deleted the account entirely from Walmart because I didn't feel like right. going through of, that ever again. What kind of uh, what kind of stuff were they buying? So this was uh, during the toilet paper shortage. So okay. there was like $100 worth of Sherman and then a whole bunch of other cleaning supplies. and, and like So they were just they were using your account to then purchase things that they could then again sell, probably an upsell to people they knew. Yeah, so the only good thing was we never actually had the money taken from our account. It got put back eventually, and then uh, they sent me a new card, and I got a Darth Vader debit card, so that was pretty sweet. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah, I mean, for your that trouble. Was, that, was the, that was the bright side, was the dark side. I think I'd be more impressed with that than like a black card, or you know what I mean, one of those really nice Darth, metal exactly. ones. Yeah. Well, the black card, all I'm going to think is, oh, wow, you're rich. Darth Vader card, like, cool, man. Mm-hmm. Stocks exactly. Star Wars. What, uh, what's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Uh, speaking of money, uh, most people don't know this, but at the top of the show, we got a text. All right. The text came in and it said something to the effect of, hey, I'm working late tonight. The money will be good. The money, right? The money will be good because, because of overtime. Oh, yeah. But I can't make dinner plans. Obviously, this is an error text. So I responded, well, you son of a bitch. What the hell am I going to eat now? Or something like that. Well, now it was on. Okay. Right. So the guy responded back, so what in the actual F? You're the one who made the plans. I responded with, I will never make plans with you again, you son of a bitch. I'm going to go listen to the men's room. Then he comes back with just, what in the F, you crazy bitch? All right. So he's, <laughs> so I finally just let him know, hey, man, you've been texting the show for the last hour. So whoever this chick is, you're trying to let know. She doesn't know yet. So he just responded, oh, S. That was almost World War Three for our relationship. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I let him know. I'm like, this why is are t- you single? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What is a good story of yours? It involves money. Two zero six four two one rock. Yeah, I'm starting to get bad. I'm like, I should let him know. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Jason. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, hola. Hola. I've been waiting to say that for years, guys. I want you to know that. Well, thanks for calling. All right, uh, so I got a pretty good story. I had an incredible lucky streak this one weekend. So I played competitive pool before the pandemic, actually. And I had a vacation plan to go down to Lincoln City, Oregon, to play in this big tournament, like 100 tables, a whole bunch of people, a great time, right? What is it when you're so playing competitively? Small, is it nine ball? Uh, eight ball, nine ball, or ten ball. It just depends on the format. Okay. Wait, what is ten ball? Uh, ten ball is like nine ball, but there's one extra ball. Uh, okay, <laughs> interesting. I feel stupid for asking. Now, now you have the ten ball on the no, table. I, no, it's kind of a new game. Okay, okay. I've never been played. around for a couple of years. All right. So I had a little budget, like five hundred bucks saved up, because I was going to go gamble a little bit. I was going to eat a little bit. It's at a casino. So I go to the bar the night before, kind of like you know a quick hoorah, play some pool, hang out, drink with the buddies. I throw twenty bucks in a pool tab bowl. Just I'm kind of drunk. I'm like whatever. Well, the bartender comes over, brings me my dish of pull tabs, and I start opening them, and I hit five ninety nine. I was like, "Holy hell!" Like, wow, six hundred bucks. So I tip her like eighty bucks. I buy a round of drinks. You know, the night goes on. And I go home. Next day, I wake up. I go to Lincoln City, Oregon. And I get down there. I find a hundred dollar bill on the floor in the casino. Jesus! I pick this. I pick this thing up, and I'm like, "Holy cow!" I'm looking around, waiting for someone to be like, "Hey, I lost the money." Well, no one spoke up. So I stuck it in my pocket, and I, you know, kind of hung around a little bit. So I throw my name in a raffle. It's a free raffle for, uh, they call it sand dollars. Like, it's the casino's version of um, their credits or whatnot. Okay. I end, up, I end up winning this raffle for 100 sand dollars, but you have to gamble the money. It's not like free money, sure, right? you just got to use it at their casino. Yes. So I go to this Willy Wonka machine and I sit down and I'm playing for five or six minutes and I hit like 300 bucks on this machine. And I'm just thinking back to myself, like two days ago, I had this $500 budget. Now I've got more than a thousand dollars to just blow down here. So I ate and drank whatever the heck I wanted had a great time. I, I played terrible pool, but who I cares? The casino. Who cares? I started hating you as the story went yeah. on. I picked up the hundred dollar bill. Now it's covering a gold cougar. Rack. Are you considered? Would you consider yourself like a semi-professional pool player? 
Oh, no way, man. I'm definitely an amateur. Like, uh, there's lots of formats. I'm a 5 out of 7 in the APA, and I'm a 5 out of 10 in the UPA. So I'm kind of in the middle ground. Okay. So better than but, us. I mean, but they handicap well, it like I mean, that, right? They handicap it, yeah. So say I was playing you guys, it wouldn't be like an even race to 5. It'd be like I'd have to win 7, and you guys got to win 2, or what have you. Gotcha. Okay, okay. that makes all sense. Right, all right. How much is your pull Q, Q these days? What, what's a McDermott cost? Like a, a really good stick. Well, you can get a McDermott anywhere from like uh, 120 to probably three, four thousand. I've got like several cues. And what? My most expensive cue is a, probably around 700 bucks. And does it make that big of a difference, or do you have to be at I mean, least as good as you are to notice a difference? Yeah, I mean, so if, if you go pick up a cue at the bar, and it's a if you're a competitive player, you pick up a house cue, you can tell the difference. Okay. You pick oh, up yeah. a beautiful, oh, yeah. it's like like a, a Joss or a JP or, or you know. Just the wait, just the waiting, worth four to five thousand dollars. Just the waiting on them alone. I like a heavy queue. There's this, uh, there's this right. girl who, before the pre-COVID thing, and she always goes to a place in our neighborhood to play pool, and she always asks if you want to play pool, and I'm always like, no. And the reason is because she brings in two sticks. Oh yeah, no chance. I'm like, no, 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 no this no. is not going to be fun. Like you are just going to wipe my ass on the table. You let me win the first game. You want to play again for money? Why don't I just buy you a drink now and get this crap over with, <laughs> so we can not waste <laughs> anyone's right. time? Let me just do that. That's what we're playing for here. Uh, what's a good story of yours that uh, involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Man, it, you know, he's talking about being on a budget. A buddy of mine got married at the, uh, what's the, uh, the Bellagio in Vegas. And at this point, live in Baltimore, and I am as broke as it gets. But he invites me to the wedding. I want to go. One, it's in Vegas, a couple of days. But, like, I have no money. So my budget was probably, like, 40 bucks. It's supposed to get me through this whole weekend, whatever the case. And I'm staying at the Flamingo. Everyone else is staying at the Bellagio, but again, based on money, I am not staying at the Bellagio. So when you get to the Flamingo, I don't know if it's still this way. The youngest person in there before I stepped in had to be 465 years old. I mean, it is just, it's like a hospice when you walk in there. You're like, oh my God, man, if they let you smoke in a hospice. So it's all these old women. So I check into the hotel. I go down to the lobby, man. Again, I'm just broke. I go up to the quarter slot machine. On my second quarter, so I invested 50 cents, I won $960. Jesus. I cannot explain to you how freaking happy I was. And I realized I'm throwing my hands, because this is, that's like when in the freaking Powerball for me at the time, man. And this old lady, I guess she had been playing the slot. You know, it's always like, ah, eh, th- there'll be the lucky pull. She'd only moved away from that slot maybe three or four minutes before I went down. She mean mugged me the whole time like it's a setup. I'm mm-hmm. like, lady, I pulled this. Like, slot. I have control over this. And all I wanted to do, so I, I I ate well, I drank my face off, and just kept enough money to buy a new TV because the TV I owned at the time, you might remember this one, you couldn't turn it off. Well, let me rephrase that. You could turn it off, but you might wait three or four weeks for it to turn back on. So what I learned was, uh, before I went to bed every night, I would just turn the volume all the way down mm-hmm. and Keep leave the TV it on. on. Yeah, because I'm like, dude, do not turn off my TV. Do not turn off that TV. I don't know if it'll ever come back on. It's bought a new TV. Greatest moment of my life. What, uh, what's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Yes, greatest moment of my life. Had kids, whatever. Mm-hmm. Buying that new TV. Yeah. Outshines them all. Hello, Marcus. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right, gentlemen. Uh, so, I lost money. Uh, maybe about... 2017, 2018, I went over to Vegas with a couple of uh, my roommates for a convention. And, uh, well, we flew out Thursday, uh, yeah, Thursday that day, went to the convention, and then I was like, screw it, my first time in Vegas, I'm going to get hammered. And that's exactly what I did. Went to, uh, went to several clubs, stayed at one club for a while, and once 12 o'clock hit, uh, 12 morning hit, payday, a little bit over twelve hundred dollars. I was happy. I was getting drunk, and then I left the hotel. The AC hit me, and after that, I can't remember anything. <laughs> Could not even remember where I was. Can't even remember my hotel. And then all I remember was bits and pieces. Like I was blacking out in and out. Like I remember I was walking to the strip by myself. I was a. Uh, Trying to talk to people, asking them where my hotel is, even though they don't really know who I am. Finally, I wake back up into my hotel, look in my bank account, and all my accounts gone. Did you see where you spent it? Uh, well, throughout the day, I started remembering like bits and pieces started coming back to me, 
and I started remembering that I, for some reason, was talking to some females. And after that, it started. I started connecting the dots, and I was like, wait, she took out five hundred and some dollars from an ATM and took out the other five hundred and something from an Albertson. So she got her bills paid and went grocery shopping all on the same night. And uh, that was on you. Uh, yeah, I I guess she took. And I guess she's my. Oh, she also took my debit card. Oh, of course, yes. Welcome it's to nice. Vegas. Yeah, it seems that way. Oh yeah. If they're smart, they they try to pilfer what, from you about eleven forty five, right? What, what because did, that way, well, after midnight, they can take out money, so you can get a thousand dollars in about twenty minutes, mm-hmm. as opposed to waiting the full twenty four hours. Uh, what, what did you end up having to do for the rest of the time then? Oh man, like luckily I was working at the airport at the time, and my cousin was like, "Hey, well, don't you have benefits?" I was like, "Oh yeah, thank God my uh, plane ticket was only two bucks to go back home." Yeah, two no, bucks, okay. two bucks. <laughs> Yeah, send me $2 to go back home. <laughs> yeah, Vegas is dangerous, man. I mean, you, know, it you, is, you can get into a lot it of is. trouble down there. I, I will say this. I read an article today. Uh, the Wynn Hotel Properties. Yes. Over 500 of their employees tested positive for COVID. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just like... It's what, Vegas. There's a lot of different ways right now that <laughs> Vegas is dangerous. And that's a really nice between that one and the Encore beside it. Those are two prime... That's where you went, uh, I believe, to go to the, the uh, topless pool. Was that the, where you... That was... Phew, was well, that, was that the win? That was the win. Castle was getting married. This is what, 2010, whatever the hell it was. But uh, he's staying at the win. We're all staying there. We rented a cabana one day, right? So a bunch of us are over there, and we had a great time. We're just drinking, hanging out, right? But on the other side of this wall, we knew the topless pools there. So me and our buddy Batman, as we call him, it's like, man, we need to go over there. And so we just look at our wives and said, listen, you can get mad about it. You can not. We're going over. Look at us boobs, right? Mm-hmm. They were like, whatever. We don't care. We walk over to this other side, and we, trust me, we're excited, but we're like, all right, man, just play it cool. You know, that's my first time going to a topless pool. It had to be the ugliest people I've oh ever God. seen yeah. in my... And, and, man, it is not like the movies. See, movies lead you to believe that if someone is topless, just based on the fact they're topless, they're also a 10 out of 10. This mm-hmm. is not true. No. I saw a woman, it looked like tree bark with nipples. And I just, I could not believe what I was seeing. And we start looking around, and we don't want to make it too obvious by going like, Ugh, and running away. So we stayed there for like 10 minutes, came walking back. And they're like, how was I, it? I said, it was absolutely effing awful. I, I never felt it was horrible. I never felt worse on a trip with, with all of us in Vegas. That, that, that trip, that, that point in time to Castle's wedding. It was so hot. It was 120 degrees. I put on the remnants of some type of suit type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We decided that we were going to get a limo because, like, Jolene and other people were traveling differently, but there was a bunch of us in one hotel, so mm-hmm. we were going to get down there and get together. Limo pulls up. It's like a 1983 uh, Lincoln Continental stretch limo. The guy first walks up and he goes, hey, man, uh, yeah, we're ready to go here. Just want to let you know uh, my uh, AC went out, so it's going to be a little bit of a hot ride. So roll down the windows and uh, that. No, it, it was <laughs> it was like you just stepped into a sauna. So now I'm just sweating alcohol the, the entire way to the church. I am just dripping with I can smell what I've been drinking. <laughs> and I mean, I'm like, please don't throw up. Please don't throw up. Please don't throw up. Don't do it. You know, what I mean? because we all just went out and got hammered. All right. So to give you an idea how hammered. We were. <laughs> I don't think we've ever told this story, but uh, give you an idea how hammered we were. So we get to the we get to the uh, the chapel, and I'm looking, and, and I'm, I'm I'm about ready to throw up. And and this is no disrespect to anybody, but I look up and there's a picture of Duff McKagan, and he and Susan had been married there as well. Oh, that's right. And I almost threw up on the picture because I looked up to <laughs> and I hold my crab, I had to hold my crab in. Okay. So the Elvis guy that's going to marry them, all right, he finally shows up, and we go in there, and Elvis marries them, all right? And at this point in time... He promises, and, make sure he's your burn a burn a yeah, hunk of love yeah. forever. And, and I don't know how, you know, you don't know too much about Jolene, never on time, right? Oh, God. So no. I go out, so the ceremony's over, all right? I go outside, and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be the right time to throw up out on the parking lot. There are other groups <laughs> getting ready, but I'm just going to go ahead and go around the corner and spew. So I go out, turn the corner, and lo and behold, there's Jolene pulling up. She missed the entire goddamn oh, yeah. thing, and I couldn't throw up because now there's like six people outside, and I was just like, whoa, God, <laughs> oh, God. God. It was horrible. Why didn't you just puke, man? Because it was just like, dude, I'll be right back. Because they got a ride there, too. So it was like, <laughs> you know, like, it was like a cab driver, everybody else who's out there. And she's like, we missed it? Yeah, you missed it. Yeah, you missed the wedding. What's, uh, what's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Annie. Welcome to the men's room. Um, 
Hi. Hola. 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 Yeah. Um, so, um, it's, I was reminded of something, uh, that happened a, a few years, uh, back when I heard the horse story. Uh, I have another horse story and, um, uh, uh, horse, like H-O-R-S-E. Yes, yes. And, um, so I had, uh, savings and I had been loaning, uh, a lot of, well, not really loaning, I guess giving away because... I knew I'd never give it back, but I had been giving away a lot of money to a relative, and uh, I, I sort of lost track of how much I had been giving, but I knew I'd given a lot. And so uh, when I went over my savings, I had uh, like 12000 left, and I thought, uh you know, because everybody has dreams with their savings, like, you know, as it gets bigger and bigger, and of course it takes a long time to save. Uh, and so anyway, so, uh, like I thought, oh, 12000 what can I do with that? You know, I mean, uh, you know. I'll tell you, you give it to me, I'll do something with it. <laughs> I know, but I mean, you know, I, I you always want to do something big, like, you know, you can't buy a house with 12000 you can't can't buy a new car or whatever, you know, and uh, so anyway, so I was really depressed, you know, for a few days, and then uh, it was Kentucky Derby time, and um, I had never bet before, but the the newspaper ad said that uh, this one horse was sure to win, and, uh, you know, uh, everybody knows, I should say most people know that that doesn't usually happen because uh, recently the horse that uh, was strongly favored to win didn't win this last Kentucky Derby. I mean, I, I do uh, watch the races now, but then in, the, in those days, uh, so I went out there and uh, I was just depressed. You know, there's nothing I can do. I've, I've spent so, I've given away so much of my savings. Uh, and so uh, then I, I bet the whole amount on the favored horse. And the odds were really low uh, because, you know, it was, no, a, it, was it was a horse that was expected to win. And so, uh, like, uh, you know, so I'm in this crowded off-track uh, betting place, you know, and, and everybody's betting, like, small amounts, like, you know, $20 or whatever. And, uh, and uh and, and somebody had saw me bet bet the large amount, and he said, "You bet twelve thousand dollars," and and I go, "Well, yeah, yeah, you know." And then so uh, it, it, the track was muddy, and the horse looked sleepy and everything. And I thought, "Oh, oh no!" And then so uh, the race was over, and uh, did the horse win? The horse won. Okay, how much money did you make? Well, because the odds were low, I only made uh, four thousand. That's not bad, that Annie. Fun. Listen, there's no wrong with that. Was, you had twelve thousand dollars. There was this one couple of people that that uh, uh, you know they kept looking at me like I was crazy. This uh, husband and wife, no. and they, they go, they no. go, you you bet a, a large amount of mon money to win a small amount, you know. And the thing of it was is. I couldn't really be overjoyed, you know. I mean, I won, but the thing of it is, is I, I could have lost. I mean, I just... Yeah, but you won. Kind of like a learning lesson, you know. Uh, yeah, don't get know. money. Don't get money away to relatives. There was no learning That's lesson. That's a lesson. Do you not give your money grand. away. You're never going to see it again. And you ended up with 16 grand. Like, yeah. that, that is not a lesson I've ever learned. Right. I've never won four if, grand. If I blow 12 grand, I'm out 12 grand. And What's I a, don't uh, have 12 grand. What's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. No one thinks about their old hot water heater until they run out of hot water. Oh, no. Or until it starts leaking. Oh, no. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, a leak could cost you a lot more than higher energy bills. Consider upgrading to a Navian tankless water heater. No tank to heat or leak. And endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. Navian turns... Oh, no. ...into... Oh, yes. Visit tanklessmadesimple.com. So I just left the house to go pick up my kids. And 10 minutes later, I got an emotional alert from Ring. My alarm was going off. I opened up my app, and there's this guy running out the front door. I didn't know who he was. Before I could do anything, I got a call from Ring. This is Jordan with Ring Alarm Monitoring. I'll send the police right over. My name's Nadine, and Ring helped save my house from a break-in. Protect your home today with Ring Alarm. Go to ring.com forward slash safety. That's ring.com forward slash safety. 
You're in the men's room. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Every miss so far in the year. Coming up, we'll do a little uh, highlight reel for you on Ted versus the FCC, but only the losses. Ted versus the FCC coming up after emails on our question. What is a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Anthony. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, fellas. Hola. Hola. I got to do it today on Positive Hello. Friday. Positive Friday. Positive Friday. 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 You know how we're doing. It's Positive Friday. All right. So I was, uh, I was 19, actually. It was only a couple of years ago. But uh, uh, my, my buddy wanted to go down to Palso to the Clearwater Casino to his, uh, his 18 like a uh, minimum or a maximum there or something like that. So I just went down there and uh, I think I had a free room at the time so I was like, you know, screw it. You know, free room. Go have some fun. So I went down there. Uh, part took a little bit just, you know, if we're not going to win anything, at least we're having a little bit of fun, you know. Um, so I get down there and I pull like 500 bucks out and I'm, I'm playing for a few hours um, and literally nothing all night. Like it was just Nothing but bad news. And then uh, I go into this, one of those moods where it's like, screw it, you know, I'm just going to go take my last, like, 100 bucks and go do some $5 hits or something, you know. So I'm just sitting there in this crappy mood and went to uh, hit some hits and, like, $10 left, I got into, like, this, uh, this bonus. And I ended up winning uh, 7800 bucks on it. Jeez, golly. Yeah, yeah, just split my whole night around. I was like, I've never won anything here that I like the scenes or anything. So I'm sitting there just jumping and like freaking out. It's it's crazy. Well, hopefully you stop there. That's the key. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I stopped there. I end up um, being able to like put a down payment on a car and paid off bills. It was, you know. Yeah, well, that's the smart. I really ended it there. Yeah, if you're yeah. going to win that kind of money, man, it's time to walk away, I think. Oh, I've never 100%. done it. I'm saying that. I'm saying that in theory. I've never won that kind of money, but I know for a fact that that would be what I'm trying to talk myself into doing. Well, not that I'm not going to go get a nice dinner after that. I don't spend think some you'll of it. gamble. I think you take most people I've seen because again, I've never. The, I hit the nine hundred sixty dollars on the slot machine, and I I physically stopped any gambling. Mm -hmm. But I did eat well and all that. But seventy eight hundred bucks, maybe I go. I tell you what. We'll take eight hundred. We'll keep gambling with that, but seven grand, yeah, absolutely. And then I tell everyone in my family that I only won three mm. grand. See, what's a uh, good story of yours that involves money? Two zero six four two one rock. Uh, my daughter asked me, Dad, if you won the lottery, what would you buy me? She asked you that. Yeah, I'm like, what? She's like, if you won the lottery, what would you buy me? Instead of I won the lottery, you'd be lucky to even find out about it. Like, what are you talking <laughs> yeah, about, exactly. man? Nothing. You put a hit out on me. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch, hola. Hola. So first off, I want to tell Miles, um, I have a pretty good rapport with animals, and I don't think sunshine's in hell. I think she's in purgatory. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, Sam. A step up. That's, that's a positive. That drags her around yeah. on hot pavement, makes her sit in a hot car right. when he goes to the store. That's, uh, that's positive reinforcement. Yeah, it's purgatory, yeah. not hell. Positive Friday. That's right. <laughs> All right, so my story, and I'm going to leave names out of this, so a really close friend of mine made a deal with a buddy that he went to high school with, and this guy got connected with the Russian mafia. Oh, that's always good. You always want to do business oh, with the Russian yeah, mob. Oh, yeah, it turned out really well. Um, so these two guys come over from Eastern Washington with $10,000 cash, and my buddy was supposed to meet up with them, but... He wasn't home, so her si his sister was home, and she was she said because she knew the guy that was the hookup. It was for weed. They brought ten thousand dollars for weed. Yes. All right. This is before it was legal. It was a long time ago. So my buddy's sister says, "Well, I know the guy. I can hook you up." So she goes with Russian dude and other guy to an apartment complex. You should never do this. You don't ever give somebody money without seeing the product. But, she, yeah, she's not very intelligent. So dude just took the money and ditched out. And they had her in a motel, like, literally held her hostage, like, tied up to a chair. Hello? She, yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm sorry. So she got... 
she she got a hold of her brother, who was my buddy, and said, this is the situation I'm in. So he said, put him on the phone. So they agreed to switch her out as a hostage for him and then started making phone calls to get the money, and they wanted double for their... Hello? Going at, yeah, well, I'm okay, oh, Sorry, sorry, Sam, go ahead. So they wanted double the money that they paid and my buddy called my mom called me this and that like we didn't have the money and he finally got a hold of a friend of ours and he showed up with a sawed off shotgun with the money and he was literally tied up in a chair in a motel and it, it got figured out it was done so your buddy managed to track someone down who had twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and they showed up and got him off the hook. And assuming now your buddy is now indebted to the person that sprang them out of the Russian mob. Yes. All right. Oh, good times, man. Are you still friends with this guy? I actually am not. Okay, hmm. Hmm. that might be a good decision. Interesting. I'm not sure that guy makes the best decisions. What's a good story of yours that involves money? Two zero six four two one rock. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've never had to interact with the mob. No. I'm sure I've interacted with the mob, but not knowingly. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds like, of versions right. of or organized crime out there. You have no idea. That's what I mean. I, I guarantee, if you've been to a laundromat, probably interacted with the mob. Mm -hmm. We interviewed a guy, he had written a book anyway. called Wise Guy, right? And uh, he's out of the mob now, but we're, we're talking to this guy. And he's like, look, man. He's like, you can watch all these dumbass movies, and people think all you do is walk around with guns, have a horrible accent, and gun each other down in public. He's like, you know... You try not to do that thing. This is a business. We just want to make money. We actually don't want any problems because you don't want the cops looking. So we said, well, what are some of the things you did? And he was a Baltimore area guy, but he's like, oh, the, I can't remember the chain of laundromats, but he's like, not anymore, but originally it was owned by, you know, Vinny Two Knuckles, blah, blah, blah. Car washes, things, things that you wouldn't even, do, but but, basically but legitimate businesses. They're, they're legit businesses. They're just run by the mob. But he, he made this point. All of us were like, oh, yeah. He said, look. One of the things you do in the mob, he said, when you're running stuff like, you know, video arcades in the 80s when they were huge, anything that involves coins. And we're like, really? Why? And he said, it's this easy. He said, because in the mob, it occurred to us that when you get tokens, right, most people equate a token to be worth 25 cents. So you put four quarters in, you get four tokens out. Those four tokens cost us about a penny a piece. So we make 96 cents on every dollar. So he's like, the laundromat game, all that stuff for people to shove money into a machine and get tokens back. It's like, that's pretty much it. And he's like, there's nothing illegal about it. Now, what we spent the money on is illegal. But mm -hmm. he's like, the businesses themselves. And I'm like, man, oh, man, I want to open something now that gives out tokens. Or tickets. These right, Prize right, tickets. They're not worth anything no, at all. Not. What's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Eric. Welcome to the men's room. Hello, guys. Hola. So my story uh, revolves around a scam that shows up in this area every few years, it seems like. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard of it, but basically uh, you're coming out of a shopping mall, something like that. Somebody pulls up with a van or Suburban. They've got three large boxes that uh, are super expensive TVs speakers, something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah. They, they tell you the story, hey, we had to deliver all these these uh, boxes. Uh, we got three left over. Our, our boss said he doesn't care what we do with them. Just get rid of them for whatever we can. And then they proceed to sell you the box of expensive speakers with crap speakers in them. Of course. Yeah. So me and a buddy of mine had some friends down. Uh, they're not very street savvy, small town boys, but they're pretty crazy. So we went to the South Center Shopping Mall and, uh, you know, split up. We came out about the same time. Me and my buddy heading to our car. They're heading over to their car. We see one of these uh, bands pull up. So we watch four minutes, see what's going on, and the slick guys come out and start the story. So we head over and, uh, you know, I pull my, my buddy aside and tell him, like, hey, you know, just so you know, this is a scam. There are speakers in the box, but the speakers are not as good as the ones that they're trying to sell you, and it's, it's a ripoff. I'm like, so why don't we bounce? He's like, no, 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 I, I'm all right. I, I want to see what's going on. So I'm like, fine, you guys do what you want to do. I'm just going to stand over here and watch. So I know these guys are ripping my buddies off, and I hate this scam anyways. Um, so I'm standing over uh, leaning against my car, which is next to their passenger side window. 
and I uh, just stand there waiting, and I look in, and there's one of those bank bags, the little gray one, mm-hmm. zippy bank bag. And I look down, and there's a bunch of cash in it. So I'm thinking to myself, like, ah, we'll see if these guys try to rip my buddies off or not. Little do I know, my buddy, who's pretty crazy but not street savvy, now he knows what the game is, and he's thinking to himself, hell with these guys, I'm just going to take their, box, their stereo box because he's a pretty tough, pretty tough kid. And uh, so he proceeds to, uh, you know, look at, look in the box, see the speakers. Oh, it sounds great. Yeah, let me put it in my truck. Da 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 da. Shuts the truck door. And the guys are like, "All right, that'll be you know seven hundred bucks." And he's like, "No, I don't think I'm going to pay you anything." Like, what are you talking about? You know, blah blah blah. And my buddy's like, "Well, you're trying to scam me and rip me off and steal steal my money. So now I'm stealing your speakers. You can call the cops if you want, but I'm sure they're not going to do anything." <laughs> right. And about the same time, I'm thinking to myself, well, they've scammed all these other people and stole these other, other people's money. So I just reached in and grabbed the, the uh, bank bag, and I stepped in my car, and we started to drive off. And then my buddy jumps in his car, not jumps in, but gets in his car, and he starts to drive off. Well, right about this time, those guys are pissed about getting their, their speakers taken, but they're not going to call the cops. And my buddy's pretty crazy, so he made it pretty apparent that you know, you don't want to try and get the, the, the box out of my car. Sure. So they take their loss, jump in their rig. We're starting to drive away. They're starting to drive away the other way. And then they notice that all of their stolen, scammed money is gone, too. So there was a little car chase through the parking lot. And uh, we eventually stopped. And everybody got out. And these guys were trying to be aggressive. But my small town buddies were uh, a little more aggressive. And uh, they took their losses and... We took our win, our win that day. Oh, it's just like going to the casino. How much money? Uh, <laughs> how much money was in the bank bag? It was literally like uh, just under eighteen hundred bucks. Damn. Okay, so you got speakers and yeah. eighteen hundred dollars. My my, uh, my buddies were just he- trying to get on the freeway, head out of town. So we just flipped them some of the cash, and then we we took that one as a win. Uh, we've taken plenty of losses. So <laughs> what did you what, what did you guys do with the money for the rest of the afternoon? Oh, God. I don't even think we spent it that day. But uh, I think oh, I, we actually went out that next weekend and bought ourselves a brand new big screen TV and a stereo system. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, all right. You get With the real, real speakers. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. He's telling the story and someone chimes in. They say that literally just happened to me at Lowe's and Ballard last week. The speakers are all right, but the sub was blown. That that that, that whole thing's been going on. That scam's been going on for over 30 years. Forever. I mean, as long as I've yeah, been I mean, alive. Even when I was a kid, uh, my, my buddy had those speakers. But... The one thing I will say, and I don't, I don't know if it's true here in Seattle, but certainly in Baltimore, they, they won't leave you alone until they can make a sale. But they'll start with the speakers, you know, the higher end items, whatever. And you're like, man, I just, one, you see them walking. I'm not going to walk with speakers all the way home. No. I don't want to spend, well, you got kids, you know, kids. Yeah, I know a few kids. We got a, a remote control car. Man, I, I don't need a remote control car. Then it's, you need batteries. Everybody needs batteries. Kind of better. Uh-huh. All right. I'll take some D batteries. Uh, hey, brother, you need socks. Like, it always ends mm-hmm. up. I can't explain. There are more people per capita in Baltimore City walking around in trench coats that have batteries and socks for sale than anywhere on the Socks street. for sale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got socks. I got batteries. How did you know? What's up? What's a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. My favorite scam in Baltimore. Not that it's a scam, but when newspapers were being sold at the time, mm-hmm. you would go to a, a newspaper stand and put in your quarter, your 50 cents or whatever, you would reach in and then you would buy, you would take every single one of those That's newspapers. Correct. And then guys would go to the intersections and then sell the Baltimore Sun for a profit. So they would just sit there like if it was 50 cents or whatever, dollar, whatever it was. Sunday was the big day. Yeah, they just they just sell the whole stack, you know, pay for one, and then they would just make all their money and do it again. My father used to get kind of pissed about it. He's like, God damn it. So I can drive to the intersection, so I gotta buy the goddamn paper from them. I'm like, well, if it bothers you that much, don't do it. He's like, you can't find the newspaper anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Like, all the boxes are empty, all the stores are empty. It's just these guys that have stolen them all. And the bottom line was, the newspaper still got distributed. So if it, you bought advertising in there, it still it still got to its location. Yeah, the advertisers you know, had no problem, with right? It. And that's how they make money. What's a, what's a good story of yours that involves money? Two zero six four two one rock. Hello, Thomas. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bees. Hola. What's going on today? Positive Friday, brother. Positive Friday. Hell I yeah. love it. So uh, my little story is, is I was uh, filling in for one of my guys at cleaning a, a, a retail store one night, in in the middle of the night by myself, and I'm vacuuming the floor, 
and there's a fixture of uh, pants. So the pants go all the way to the floor. And I push the vacuum underneath, and all of a sudden it jams up. And I pull it out, and I flip it over, and there's like three $20 bills jammed up into the roller. Where did that come from? What the hell? Yeah, it was like I did didn't even know what to think. I just was, I was shocked. So I, I unjam it. It's about two in the morning. I need to keep moving so I can get the heck out. And I start vacuuming again and I shove the vacuum under again and it jams up again and I pull out and there's another wad of 20 stuck in it. How many this time? Uh, about four. And they won't go all the way up into it because they're too big. So they get jammed up into the roller. So I got to halfway take it apart to pull them all out. So... I separate the the clothing, and I at the uh, within about five minutes, I found three hundred dollars in twenty dollar bills. Was somebody hiding it back there, like an employee was eventually going to come and steal it the next day? Would that, that be your uh, guess? You would. You would. Uh, I didn't know what to think at the time, so I um um I I took the money. The, the store was all locked up, so I took it home with me. I left a note with um some management there to let them know. And I came in um, early the next morning and um, sure enough, a customer um, had called to look for lost money. You know what? And I'm going to start trying that randomly. Did you call Target and be like, hey man, I left like 400 bucks in there. Did you guys find it? <laughs> did you turn the money in? <laughs> I did. You know, one thing you learn about retail pretty quick is, is that they have cameras oh, all right. over the place. And uh, these cameras can take a picture of your, can read your ID if it's sitting on the counter. So, you know, there's, uh, somebody's always watching. Oh, that's fact. We know that. Yeah. All right. Well, if it did not have cameras, would you have reported it? I would have. Uh, I didn't really feel like it was mine to keep anyway. it's just one of my character flaws, I guess. Yes, that is a character That's flaw. That's horrible. Yeah, you really can't is. be part of Ocean's Eleven with that honest heart. No. Well, I know. I would be horrible in Ocean's Eleven. That's for sure. Getaway my driver drove us straight yeah, to the police po- station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my poker face is non-existent. My, my, my um, poker face. My poker face. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, a good story of yours that involves money? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Darren. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. So, uh, yeah, I still remember this one 17 years later. Um, I was in Renton at a bowling alley that had a little uh, casino built into it. And uh, playing Spanish 21, and um, they have a progressive bet. If you're familiar with progressive betting, um, you it's a digital screen that says the amount of the of the jackpot and if you and there's like five different card combinations also that you could be dealt and you get like five dollars up to like a hundred dollars but if you get two aces and you split your aces and you are dealt two more aces which is almost unheard of you win the progressive uh jackpot if you bet the dollar to, to, to go it's a sucker bet you know i mean you can bet that all night long, and it's you're giving money to the casino, basically. Sure. You'll win five or ten bucks here or there. But anyway, um, so yeah, and there was four or five other people playing with me, and I was betting the progressive because it's just fun for me. You know, it adds a little excitement to the game. I'm not there to bring home a bunch of money. I'm there to just have some fun. I have some extra money, so let's play jack, blackjack. And um, so I'm betting this progressive bet, and... I have, you throw a dollar chip in this little slot, and it confirms that you bet this progressive bet. So I had no one dollar chips left, and there was like five people playing with me, and they were trying to, and I was just ready to throw them a five dollar chip and say, hey, can I have five ones? Um, and then there's like three guys staring at me, so I just go ahead, and I remember this vividly, but I say, go ahead, deal, deal. And he dealt me two aces, and I was, like, oh, my God, great. I would have just won, like, 100 bucks. I, I would have won, like, 10 bucks or something, whatever it was. No, you have to split them and, and then be dealt uh, two other what, whatever cards they are. Um, so I split my aces just for because that's what you do, and I and I was dealt another ace. 
and another ace. And I and I and I was one dollar bet away from taking home sixty eight thousand dollars. What did you end up taking home? I didn't win anything because I didn't. Oh, 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 dude. Oh, oh, that'll never happen again. No. Ah, you got the four aces, man. Oh, my God. Okay. So much for gambling. Coming up, every loss of the year with a return of Ted versus the FCC. You are listening to the men's room. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit TanklessMadeSimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Count on the beer. 